Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Bree. We're the PR team behind the theater downstream. For our sixth season, we wanted to get to know the people behind the characters. We wanted to get real. Today, I got to sit down with Mandy Glauber, who plays Luetta Murphy in He Need a Killin'. Mandy talks about her life as an award-winning dancer, how life changed the floss, and which actor she still can't believe she gets to share the stage with. Okay, welcome to Getting Real. Hi. What is your name and what character do you play? I am Mandy Glauber and I play Luetta Murphy. What is your day job? I teach second grade at Locust Grove Elementary in Crestwood. What is the best part about teaching there? I have taught for 21 years and I absolutely love working with the kids. I've taught second through first through fourth grade. I've had combinations of different grades and I just love being able to see the kids grow throughout the year. Mm -hmm and being able to see their excitement when they learn something new. Is there any, like, interesting, wacky stories in your many years of teaching? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's been plenty. I've had one little boy, and he was, back when I taught at Camden Station Elementary, he loved animals and insects and bugs. And so it never was very, you know, uncommon for him to bring something in to show us. Well, one day he had this little this little container and he's like you've got to look you've got to look look what I've brought to school and I open it up and it's a spider and I'm like oh well this is fun and then I notice it's a brown recluse (gasps) so I have to call his dad and I'm like um you really need to come and get it because I don't want to set it loose and he was one that he did not kill anything Mm. because if he saw a little centipede or anything going across the floor he would put it outside the window so I couldn't kill it so his dad had to come to school and and get the brown recluse and take it home. Oh my and his dad had no idea. So. Oh my gosh, I would have yeah. panicked. It was really it was kind of scary. And yeah. one time, another time, I had a little child, and I am terrified of birds. Mm-hmm. Brought a rooster in, <gasps> and oh I sat on the other side of the classroom because they knew I was scared of birds. And they all sat in a little circle, and the mom brought the the rooster in. And the rooster ended up on one of my little kids' heads and would not let go. And I was literally screaming in the corner of the room. And that was the last time we had any live animals in my classroom. I do not doubt that and do not blame you. (laughs) Yeah, it was bad. So is teaching your dream job? Yes. I've wanted to be a teacher since I was in second grade. I always knew I wanted to teach. My grandmother actually taught school. And she never... She was never really a certified teacher, but she was long-term subs. She just instilled that, and I just, I loved it. There was a brief time that I wanted to be a physical therapist, but then I decided that would cause too much pain for people, so I went back to teaching. So let's talk about your family. Tell me about your kids. Oh, I have three kids. Haley will be 16 next month, and Reagan just turned 14, and Quinn will be nine on Saturday. They are my everything. They keep me busy, and I love it. Haley is a cheerleader. And Reagan's in theater, and Quinn loves baseball and also loves the theater. And I'm so super excited that he's found two different things to love. Mm -hmm. We do everything. We love to go hiking, and we love to go on trips together. We love to go down to Panama City. We go to Gatlinburg a lot. We love the Titanic Museum. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so we love it. What brought you into acting and the world of community theater, as in what is your origin story? Well, I'll be honest Acting has always been like my secret dream, but I've never done anything with it. But the funny thing is, is to connect this all with teaching is my very first job. I went for the interview and he was like, well, what kind of clubs would you be interested in doing? And I was like, oh, I I don't know. I could I could tackle any club that you, you know, would you would give me? And he's like, well, we really need a drama club. I was like, oh, I could do that, which I. I had never been on the stage in my life. I've ne- I've danced on a stage, but but I'm like, sure, I can do it. So we had it was an after school. It wasn't during the day, but you know, during the school day. But it was after school, and we put on a f- couple plays, and it was good, and they ended up you know pretty good for me having no experience. And then they picked it up as a related arts class later, and somebody else took it, which I was gladly <laughs> passing that on. When Reagan started showing interest in it I was really excited because I thought I can finally see you know Mm -hmm. see see everything come to life on stage so when she got into it I became interested and 
here we are. Do you have a dream show or a dream role? I never thought about it that much, so I'm not sure of what it was. I've always, I see it more as what I know what Reagan wants to do. Mm -hmm. And so she was excited when she was in Annie and she was excited for White Christmas. And Mm -hmm. so her excitement is is what I think of more. I haven't thought about me being on stage, Mm -hmm. so I've never really never really thought about it. Is there a particular show that you've seen that you really liked? I I cannot wait for The Sound of Music. I love The Sound of Music. I was excited. I'll be honest. I was excited about White Christmas all the way through because I'd Mm -hmm. never seen the movie. So I was excited and Reagan quickly watched that movie right before her audition (laughs) because she had not seen it. So she was like, I think I better watch it. Um, So yeah, um, that... Music. I just love musicals in general. I mm-hmm. wish I could sing, but I cannot <laughs> sing at all. I love to sing alone to where no one can hear me. Hey, hey, I'm a singer, and I always tell people it can be taught. It is not. Some people can do it without having a lot of training, and they can do it okay, but everyone can be taught. Well, it would take a lot of teaching. <laughs> It would take a lot. And my children would agree with me because anytime I start to sing, they go, shh, don't. Just be done. I embarrass them. That's one way I know I can embarrass my children. Start singing and they'll be like, oh my gosh. What makes acting so appealing to you as in why is it something you can't not do? I think it's really cool being able to bring a character to life and you can be Mm -hmm. somebody else. And I think that's, what um, I see so many people, you know, people that, for Reagan, for example, who can be somebody totally different on stage. Mm -hmm. And she is shy in real life. And when she's Reagan, she isn't able to talk to a whole bunch of people. You put her on stage and she's different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm enjoying the most about it is because I can be on stage and I don't have to be me. Mm -hmm. And I can be someone else and portray that person. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about He Need a Killing. How would you summarize the show? It is a show where a woman f- finds her strength kind of accidentally with the help of her best friends. What do you feel are the themes of the show? Friendship, emotional growth, mm-hmm. love between friends and family. Do you have a favorite line or scene? There are so many that I just absolutely love. I like when when Carol tries to correct Dylan and her just, Dylan? Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. I love when Dylan says, um, I don't think any of us want to be frank right now. Yeah. I, I love, love that, that line. I love it. What is it like working with Brian, who is the main villain and who is very antagonistic towards your character, versus working with him as Brian? During the audition, he looked at me and he was like, okay, this is totally different. Because in White Christmas with Reagan, he was the sweet and kind mm-hmm. person. And so I saw him as this one character on stage yeah. with my daughter. And then he looks at me and he goes, oh, this is totally different. <laughs> so I've been able to see Brian both ways on stage. but um, And he does an amazing job portraying Frank as the character. But off stage, I see him as Brian, who we can joke around. And behind stage, we can play with a balloon back and forth while we're waiting to go on stage. So there's... You know, it's a total, totally different switch Mm -hmm. of where we are and what we do. So it's really neat that I was able to see him in both of those roles. Mm -hmm. What is challenging about bringing Luetta to life? Being able to portray the emotion that I need at the right time. Mm. Because there are so many highs and lows of her character. I want her to be able to be happy when she needs to be happy. But I also want to portray the moments when... She is extremely fearful. Mm -hmm. What is rewarding or what is positive about working with an original script? I love it. Um, (laughs) I absolutely love it. Because I think it's something new and and different. You know, when you see the other shows that are already there, you know Mm -hmm. what, you just know what's going to happen. And you have that expectation. With original, it's bringing something that you've never seen to life. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really cool to see it come together and be a story that Mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yeah. What's challenging about working with an original script? Me, personally, because it's the very first time I've been on stage, I am paranoid that I am not going to be able to get the level of expectation of mm-hmm. what is expected and what was thought of when the when it was written. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing to the level in which it's supposed to be done. 
because the person who wrote it is there. What is it like working with the writers of the script? Wonderful. Wonderful. But it, yeah, exactly. Um, I just, I get nervous because, and I was talking with Ashley because I, I was caught up almost in the words of everything mm-hmm. and making sure I hit every single word and I was losing the emotion and the acting behind mm-hmm. it. So now I've thought more about the emotion behind it and I'm not so worried about verbatim except in certain spots. Right. You haven't been acting for very long on stage. So, so far, are you seeing any, this is my strength, this is my weakness kind of things? Do you, have you been able to identify those things yet? Well, I just, the one that I mentioned is the verbatim and just, Mm -hmm. just making sure the emotion gets in it. Like I have the emotion, like what I'm supposed to in my head, but just making sure it is shown and demonstrated. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm, that I'm working on. My strengths, I'm not there yet. We'll get there. Honestly, memorizing the lines the way that I, the way that I did, considering I was finishing up school Mm -hmm. and everything else, I was surprised that I learned as much as I did, even though I'm not completely there yet, but. I can tell you one thing you're really good at is facial expressions. Oh, really? You are very good at that. That's yes. so cool. Why did you want to be a part of He Need to Kill Him? So four years ago, I lost my mom unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. And my mom was my strength. She was my rock. She was my best friend. And without her, I kind of made, I kind of felt lost. And I didn't know really where my place in this world was. But once I... Reagan got involved and I saw the family that we have here at the theater downstream I felt like this is the place I needed to be and this this play was presented as an opportunity for me to try something different and to put myself out there and find my place and so that's why I tried and I'm having a great time doing it my grandmother who always did her own thing like she was again she was the one that she did she marched to her own drummer and she did things the way she wanted to do. She always told me that I was going to be I was going to be strong and I was going to be brave and I was going to be able to do things that I may never have thought I would be able to do. So when this play presented itself, I was still kind of like, oh, I don't know whether I should do mm-hmm. it. But then when I saw the audition date, it was April 5th and that was my grandma's birthday. So I knew that that was my sign that I needed to to put myself in that situation and try because yeah. it, it was it was the right day and I just wanted to take that opportunity. Yeah, and it paid off. She was right. She was. She was. Look, so excited. grandmas, they're always right. They are. They really are. Oh, very much. So. <laughs> Besides yourself, <laughs> which actor in this show do you think is just going to blow the audience away? I love Ruth. I love how she is so level-headed, and she has every reason to do everything the way she does it. Mm -hmm. So I love Ruth. Which Uh, is Nancy Ruitt. Yes. Goodness. Everybody's so good for for all sorts of different reasons. I just, Mm -hmm. I love every single person in the cast. Because they, they bring their character to life in so many different ways that I think because there's so many different personalities, I think that everybody in the audience will be able to associate with somebody. Mm-hmm. when they see this play. Do you think that this show is something that is going to be received well by audiences? I think so. And I think because because it is comedy, too, I think it's going to be a lot easier for people to maybe relate to it and right. enjoy it. And even if it's not a direct connection, there's I think there's going to be some parts of the play that everyone will be able to say, oh, that's happened to me. Yeah. Or I've known somebody that's had that happen because I think it touches so many different, different types of people, Mm -hmm. even though it's titled He Needed Killing. There's so many different other aspects that people can relate to. So who's your favorite character in the show? Uh, My favorite character is Joan. (laughs) I really love her because she just tells it like it is and she just puts it all out there. And I think that's what some people want to do, but they don't have the strength to do that. I really I really think she's going to be one that a lot of people either connect with or want to be like mm-hmm. because that's how you get through a lot. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. And you yeah. tell it like it is. So what has it been like working with the women? You're you're a new actor. How is it working with, and not, I don't mean like the characters, I mean what's it like working with Nancy and with Michelle and with Laura? What is that like for you coming into this as someone brand new? 
Right. Well, I was terrified because I'm looking at everybody who's had experience on the stage before, mm-hmm. but it has been so welcoming because Nancy will look at me and she's like, it's okay. You're going to get nervous and that is fine. So she reassures me with my, you know, with my feelings. And with Michelle, we can sit there and talk and go, oh, well, this is what happened, but it's okay. And we have a lot of the same feelings since she doesn't have a lot of experience. But we can sit and and compare stories with that. Candy and I, we are backstage and we can talk. It's just, it feels, we've meshed really well. And we can understand each, we Mm -hmm. can talk about our, oh, what are we going to do with this? And how are we going to change? And I think we're able to help each other out with that. But I have just felt like we have just bonded really well to make this group of women strong. What do you think contributed to that? I think they casted really well. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I mean, because when you look at when you look at the people and you look at the per- the characters that they're supposed to portray, I think that even though we may not be that exact same personality or that character, I think that we have been able to get in touch with that character. Mm -hmm. I think by understanding that relationship that we're supposed to have, that's helped us bond. This is a really, I don't want to say a close-knit cast, because I feel like that's not the right word, but like this cast just works together really, really well. Right. I mean, Everyone in this production just works together so well. Every single pe- person, because even when we don't have all our rehearsals with the party guests and everything, but mm-hmm. when everybody comes together, it just feels like we're all supposed to be together. Mm-hmm. So I think that is just, it's amazing. I, yeah. yeah. It's just like the most amazing synergy. Yeah, it is. Because, I mean, and I don't know everybody mm-hmm. that has been on this, that's on the stage, but I feel like I've already known them. For a long time. Right. Like Adam as Eugene. I didn't know him. And now we're able to talk and I feel like I've known him forever. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I think this is a really good one for you to come in as as or come into as a new actor. I think that's that's probably the best way that you could come into this. (laughs) Well, I think so, too. And I think that's it's great that it's an original Mm -hmm. original because there isn't. It's it's all coming together as we go, mm-hmm. and there's nothing up here that we, well, this is what it's supposed to look like. Right. We're developing it as we go. Right, right. And talking to each other, feeding off of one another, and being able to share our thoughts. Yeah. So what was the audition process like going into this brand new? Well, fortunately, I knew kind of through Reagan's right. auditions. But coming into it as the person who was actually doing it, it I was terrified. But it was ve- it wasn't a scary, scary process mm-hmm. at all. It was just one that was brand new, and I didn't know exactly what was happening. Sure. I just knew and was very grateful I didn't have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of a straight show. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I just don't have to sing. This is good. But I loved it because I came ever I came back every day that they, we had auditions, and I felt like I was able to develop the character even through the auditions. And even if I hadn't gotten the part, I was really and i'd already told ashley i wanted to be a part of this the show at to, at some, on some level mm-hmm. because again i just felt like i was supposed to be because it was on it was on my grandma's birthday and i just felt like that was my place mm-hmm. and i needed to be just throughout the process and being able to come and listen to everybody it was really neat too because the other people that were reading for other parts it was neat to see how they interpreted yeah, the lines and to see the different ways that they thought the characters should act. So it was a process that's neat because it made me realize that there isn't just one way mm-hmm. to do it, that you could interpret it many different ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When did you first perform? And by that, I don't mean when did you first act, because you do have experience in performance, right? Yes. I have been dancing on stages since I was six years old. I have clogged forever. Um, I was on a national, a national champion team. Oh, neat! And we won many competitions. And when I was a junior in high school, my team broke up, which was devastating mm-hmm. because I traveled with them and we did everything. I joined another team my senior year, but then when I went to college, I stopped. But when I graduated college, I started my own team. We were able to perform. We were national champions. I had that team for probably eight years, and we were the American Pride Cloggers. So we've danced at many different place, places in front of many different people. So, and I've been, I've been in plays that I dance, and I was in White Christmas, but I've never spoken, so that's a whole different, whole different idea mm-hmm. or aspect. But yeah, the stage, 
has always meant dancing to me. And that I'm comfortable with. So you said you started your own team. What was that like? What? How old was your team? Were you the instructor? Tell me about that. Okay. I started the American Pride Clogging Group mm-hmm. uh, when I taught at Camden um, back in 1999. And we started practicing in the school's kitchen because that was the only place we could we could get together. <laughs> I had um, started it out with just elementary kiddos, but the parents were always there because they had to bring them to practice. So eventually I started an adult group also. So it was the parents. We had that. We ex- expanded out of the kitchen. We couldn't fit in the kitchen anymore. So then we moved to my house and we danced there. Um, we've tra- we traveled seven or eight different states. And we were together until my girls, I call them my girls, they, they all were in elementary school. And then once they all hit high school, then they decided that they wanted to get into more school opportunities, which mm-hmm. was fine. But we would travel a lot. Once they got into high school, they moved on. I kept my adult group for a couple years lo- longer, but past that, and I now go see the, you know, the dances sometime, mm-hmm. but I don't get to perform my clogging anymore. Mm-hmm. But. Have you thought about trying that again? I would love to, but with the kids, it's really, it's it's just too much. One day I would love to go back. I've actually judged competitions before, oh, clogging okay. competitions. So at one point in the far future, I would love to have the opportunity to go back and judge. But to be on the stage, I don't know if my knees will able <laughs> to handle that anymore. But I would certainly love to be able to sit there and watch them all because mm-hmm. they're great. I actually have written what I've been asking the others is, do you have anybody that you look up to as an actor or a director or writer? But for you, I would say, probably, who do you look up to as an actor or a dancer? Okay, dancers, I, I, there are tons that mm-hmm. I could mention. And so, and they have changed throughout the years. So I don't even know exactly who to mention. But I'm just, as for who I am extremely excited to be working with on stage, I'll be honest, the very first time that Reagan was on the stage, and I saw Brian on the stage. I was like, oh, my gosh, he's amazing. Mm-hmm. So to be able to be working with him and being in this role is just, it doesn't seem real. It, it, I'll be honest, it does not seem real that I am actually on the stage with him. When I looked at him at a and I was just like, oh, my gosh. What do you admire so much about Brian? What is it about him? Because no matter what character he is on the stage, he is that character. Mm-hmm. And he brings every character to life on stage in a way that makes you feel that you are there. Yeah. And seeing him from Annie to to Wizard of Oz and White Christmas, it just the, the all the different personalities and just being able to portray that just amazes me. Do you have any goals now that you've started in theater? Do you have anything that you're like, okay, now I want to do this? Well, here's the thing. I've always told my kids, I was like, this is it. I'm done. This is this was my play. I, I was doing this is my bucket list and check. But secretly, I would love to do another one. Yeah, I would. But I don't know. I don't know what it would be like. I'm not like I said, I can't sing. So it's no musical at all. But I love musicals. But no, I will let everybody that can sing well do those. But um, yeah, I would love to do another play at some point. The thing is that it's really hard for me to balance during the school year is my job and the kids and making sure that I get them where they're supposed to be and but that's something that I'm working on as mm-hmm. a person, too, mm-hmm. is just balancing and making sure that I do everything that I need to for them, but also take care of myself mm-hmm. and do what I enjoy. What will your audience be thinking about in the car as they drive home from the show? I hope that when they leave the show, they will be able to walk away with knowing the strength of friendship and how important that is. And even the smallest details can make a huge impact on someone Mm -hmm. and with that that they can think about their life and what they can do and it just be able to affect them in a positive way why should people come see he knew to kill him because it is a it is a show that everyone can relate to and it is it has so many different storylines in it that everyone that watches it can be impacted in a positive way Mm -hmm. Hopefully there can be some individual strengths knowing that things happen and they're not alone. And even though you think this cannot be happening to anyone else, it does. 
whether it be a relationship between a daughter and a mother, or a son and a mother, a husband and a wife, or five women that play bridge on Saturday. So if this show were to be made into a movie, who would you like to see tackle the role of Luetta? I love Julia Roberts. I do. But I also love Sandra Bullock. And because I... I always think of Sandra Bullock as the happy, you know, Mm -hmm. just the really cheery role. But lately I've seen some movies where she plays different things in it. So Mm -hmm. I think I think it would be interesting to see how she interpreted that. Yeah. I feel like Practical Magic Sandra Bullock could really handle Luetta. Oh, that's right. Yep. Definitely. What is the last thing you do before you go on stage or what is your pre-show routine? I'm not have that set yet. However, every time right before I go on, I repeat the first few lines in my head before I know I have to get mm-hmm. onto stage. And I say a little prayer thinking, please, Lord, let me just get through these these lines and not stutter <laughs> or fall. Yeah. Because when I come in, I forget that the little ledge is there and sometimes trip <laughs> over that. And also when I have to come down the steps and talk at the same time, I, I say a little prayer that I don't fall down all of the mm-hmm. stairs. I can tell you one thing that's in your pre-show routine is Bree checks your bobby pins. That's true, because my <laughs> hair is just the most difficult hair ever. And you love me because of it. It's like, okay, Mandy, got to make sure we're still intact. You know, 18 bobby pins later. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. What do you spend your five-minute rehearsal breaks doing? Uh, right now, going over lines. But that's going to change, because I know I don't have to have verbatim now. So I think basically what I try to do is just kind of breathe And take that moment just to think about what's coming next and be able to get in that moment and go with that. What is your best advice for other people who are just now getting into acting or wanting to get into acting? Do it. Just be brave. Do it. Put yourself out there because it allows you to see a side that you didn't, a strength that you may not have known you had, but you can do it. And to believe in yourself. What is your advice for other dancers? Take care of yourself. Believe in, because dance is just the interpretation of things too. So be able to put yourself out there and don't shy away. Like if it's something that's, it's a fear that you may have of not being perfect, it's okay. And to get out there and just try. Have you noticed any performance similarities with dancing and theater? Yes, because when there were steps in dances that I struggled with, I would It was hard to get past that and be able to go over that. But I finally just had to let myself not overthink it and just do it. And usually it came that way. And now I'm learning with your lines and with your character, you can't overthink it. You just have to be it and Mm -hmm. do it and run with it because it it all starts coming together through practice and and confidence Mm -hmm. and being able to have that confidence that you can do it. So now we're going to move on to the rapid fire questions. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't okay. Um, It's just the first thing that comes to your mind. So it doesn't have to be what your actual answer would be. Just the first thing you think of. Got it. Okay. Ready? Ready. What's your favorite meal? Oh, <laughs> this is awful. But the first thing that came to my mind. No, it's not awful. It's steak and potatoes. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Most quotable movie? The Outsiders. Ooh. Stay gold. first. Best book that you've read lately? Oh, I don't read books. <laughs> no, I sh- okay, that's bad. Um, book, you know what? I reread The Notebook, and that, that I just, I love that book. Nicholas Sparks. Favorite cartoon as a kid? The Smurfs. Ooh, good one. I love the Smurfs. If you could have any animal as a pet, not a dog or a cat, what animal would you pick? Pig. Hands down. Oh, that was quick. You were ready for it. I want a pig so bad. (laughs) Uh, You have no idea. I love pigs. Do you have any historical heroes? I always wanted to meet Ronald Reagan. Mm. There you go. Henceforth, my daughter named Reagan. Okay, the big question. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. (gasps) You're our first Pepsi! (laughs) I cannot believe that. Yeah, I'm Pepsi. Yeah. Wow. I it mean, sorry, a- <coughs> Coke. <laughs> <clears throat> Join us next week for our new Luetta because Mandy's fired. <laughs> but I drink Coke at school because we have a Coke machine. It's not like I don't like it. It's just if I have a, pre- pre- yeah, if I can have a choice. It would be Although I will say, I think I prefer cherry Pepsi over cherry Coke. Ooh, cherry, cherry Pepsi is way is better gross. than cherry Coke. Except cherry limeade. Cherry limeade I can do, but cherry Coke or cherry Pepsi, well. Oh, they're so good. Have you tried the orange vanilla Coke? Oh, no, don't get <gasps> me. Artificial orange is awful. 
And you know what orange artificial uh, or artificial orange is awful is because when I was little, you had the little orange aspirin that you were supposed to mm-hmm. ha- take. I hated those things so much as if I had a headache or anything, it was still, they would hand me the aspirins. I would throw them behind the refrigerator. I would not take that uh, those aspirin. And then when my grandma was going to pull out the refrigerator to sweep behind it, guess what I volunteered to do? Sweep out the mm-hmm. refrigerator because I wasn't taking those orange aspirin. You know what? I There was a time when I could not stand artificial orange flavor because I had to take that stupid test at the doctor where you had to drink that whole thing and I got the orange flavored one and I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever had in my life. It was terrible. Uh, so. Well, I no, or artificial orange anything will make me ill. Ugh. So no, I have not had any orange drink. If you could live in any decade, which one would you pick? <gasps> oh, the 50s. Ooh, that's a good one. I like the fit. If you could tell the child version of yourself, so 10-year-old Mandy, if you could tell her anything, what would you tell her? Be strong, be brave, and listen to people that tell you, give you advice. Mm, and take your aspirin. And take my orange aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you knew that you could not fail, what would you do? If I could not fail, which means that I could sing, I would go sing on the Grand Ole Opry. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Big dreams. Big dreams that'll Big dreams. never happen. I like it. I like it. Well, thank you for appearing on Getting Real today. I loved it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was great. Join us next time for a conversation with Brian Douglas Barker, where he talks about what it's like being the man everyone wants to kill. He Need a Killin' opens July 26th and runs through August 4th. General tickets are available July 1st, 2019 at www.thetheaterdownstream.com. Special thanks to Mandy Glauber for appearing today on Getting Real. And to the sponsors of He Need a Killin', Cedar Lake, Starview Greenhouses, and United Citizens Bank and Trust. This episode of Getting Real was executive produced, written, and edited by me, Ashley Raymer Brown. It was produced, hosted, and co-written by me, Free Haishu. Sound design by Josh Martin. Music was provided by Final Cut Pro. And artwork was created by Ashley Raymer Brown. That's me. And Bree Haishu. That's me. Getting Real is a separate entity from the theater downstream. The thoughts and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not reflect the thoughts and opinions of the theater downstream. Thanks for listening. Show is about